Living in a patriarchal society, women somehow tend to be uh, always blamed for any fault. Her family holds her responsible for their reputation. So the minute this woman did something wrong, they see no solution but to kill her. For them, blood cleanses honor. On April 7th, just outside Iraq's northern city of Mosul, 17-year-old Dual Khalil Aswad was dragged by a group of relatives, including her brother and uncle, into the village square. Hundreds of townspeople watched as she was stripped, kicked, and repeatedly stoned. Her gruesome killing was caught on a video cell phone. Ms. Aswad's crime? She was in love with a young man, and members of her family disapproved. Each year, hundreds, if not thousands, of people worldwide are shot, stabbed, strangled, stoned, or burned to death. And almost always, the victim is a woman accused of tarnishing her family's honor. Families decide to kill for these reasons. Uh, rumors, suspicion, uh, rape. If, if a woman is raped, sometimes they blame her for the rape. Incest, also they might kill her. Choosing her own man to get married to. Talking to a man. Rana Husseini has documented the practice of honor killings as a reporter for one of Jordan's leading newspapers. She's on a mission to end the silence surrounding this horrific crime. And I think I'm here to, to speak in the name of these women who have no voices. Her upcoming book, Murder in the Name of Honor, documents the rise of honor crimes worldwide. The typical honor killer usually uh, is the brother. Some families are very knowledgeable about the law. Sometimes they choose uh, minors to commit the crime because these minors, they get away with very lenient uh, sentences. It could, it could range from three months to two years. It's difficult to get precise numbers, but the UN estimates that worldwide at least 13 people are killed a day, at least 5,000 a year. And while the majority of these crimes occur in Arab and Muslim countries, a growing number take place in immigrant communities in the US, Europe, and elsewhere. You know, honor killings is not just a problem isolated to the Muslim communities in the Middle East. Today, Christian families are also engaging in this horrific practice. And the proof is that in Jordan, we, I've covered several, uh, let's say, five or six cases of Christian women who were killed by their families because they tarnished their family's honor. There are similar cases reported in Syria, similar cases reported in uh, Egypt, South America also. But the problem is generally more prevalent in Islamic cultures, where women are often viewed as property with no rights. A few months before Dual Khalil's murder, Farida, also from northern Iraq, was kidnapped from her home and taken to the Turkish city of Salopi. There she was drugged, raped and sold into prostitution. I was treated like an animal. I was used like a piece of meat. She was discovered by Turkish authorities and sent back to Iraq. But instead of being welcomed home, her family now wants her dead. To them, I'm dirty and worthless. Farida is now being protected by a group of human rights activists at an undisclosed location. But the day we met her, she had tried to kill herself by jumping from this window. I don't want to leave anymore. I'm as good as dead to my family. In Jordan, if a woman is afraid that her family wants to kill her, she can check herself into the local prison. That's what Wadi did after she was raped. A few months later, I found out I was pregnant. I was afraid to tell my family, so I kept my mouth shut until my pregnancy started to show. When I was due, I went to the hospital and gave birth. They asked me for the family ID card, but I did not have one. They told the police, and that's why I'm here. The only problem is that Wadid can't check herself out of prison. The only person who can check her out is a male relative. And most of the time, if a family decides they want to release their female, 99% uh, it's to kill them. Human rights experts say dozens of women are languishing under the so-called protective custody in Jordanian prisons. Some of the women, they've been in the prison for more than five years. Zaina and Shadi got out last year only after agreeing to get married in prison. We've concealed their identities for security reasons. We had a child outside of marriage. This is considered adultery in Jordan. 
The only way to restore our family's honor was to get married or else risk being killed. Honor killings are technically illegal in Jordan, but tradition and social pressure make it difficult to amend laws that allow killers to get off with little or no punishment. We just can't abandon these traditions quickly. It will take time. We're making progress and things are going to get better. Social, religious and political groups are steering a public debate on the topic, but challenges remain. Husseini receives numerous death threats and is accused of being anti-Islamic. Still, she is trying to convince her society and others around the world that life is more important than some distorted view of honor. The right of life is something very uh, holy and it's not, in, it's not for anyone on this planet to take someone else's life. God created us and God, God takes us. George Thomas, CBN News, Amman, Jordan.